Hello and welcome to Skipping Excel video two. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. I needed to get the transactions in my e-commerce system over to QuickBooks, and since there is no direct integration, what I had to do was download the transactions, clean them up in Excel, so that they could be uploaded in the correct format to QuickBooks. And in the first video, I demonstrated how that was originally a 30 minute a day process, then I was able to automate it and taking it down to a 15 minute a day process, and then ultimately down to a five minute a day process. Now I'm gonna talk about the tools that help me get it down to a zero minute per day process. The best case scenario is that the two systems have a direct integration. And since there is no direct integration with my two applications, I had to get an intermediate step, okay? And that intermediate step is Zapier. Zapier can connect many different types of systems that don't have a built-in integration, and it's amazing. But the problem is my e-commerce system didn't have an integration with Zapier. <laughs> Since there's no integration with my e-commerce system in Zapier, however, I had to have another intermediate step, and that is mail parser. So the flow basically looks like a transaction is booked in my e-commerce system. The e-commerce system sends a confirmation email out to the student and over to mail parser. Mail parser then parses the email and pulls out the value fields and sends them over to Zapier. Zapier then takes them, and once it's in Zapier, it's game over, because what we can do there is we can push this almost anywhere. And so in this case, I pushed a copy of the transaction into QuickBooks Online, but it could have just as easily been virtually any other online application. So what I wanna do is, in this video, show the steps for setting up Mail Parser and how we set up the rules. And in the next video, I'm gonna show how we take the values from Mail Parser and put them into Zapier, and then from Zapier all the way into QuickBooks Online. So first, let's start with Mail Parser. All right, once you've created your Mail Parser account, we create a new inbox, and here we create a descriptive name. I'll call this uh, e-commerce sales. And for the notes, I'm basically going to say e-commerce system transactions send to Zapier for QuickBooks. All right, then I click save. All right, and what we get at this point is a new mail parser email address. And what we have to do is send the first sample over to this email address. All right, so I've gone over and I forwarded a email here. And now mail parser says that we got the email and now we can add some parsing rules. All right, and mail parser is going to try to look at the email and highlight what it discovers as data fields that we might want. So in this case, as we examine this, it looks like it guessed pretty well. Like these are all the fields that I need to send into QuickBooks. All right, so since this looks pretty good, I actually wanna start with this template, but then we'll do some customization so you can see how the rules actually work. So I click start with this template. Let's start with the rules. Now basically what it's saying is these are some rules that pick out these particular fields. So it's basically each data field has its own set of rules that it uses to, to locate that specific field within the email. So if we want date, which in this case we do, we'll leave it. If we have something that we don't need, we can just click delete. So we don't need that. We do need this. We wanna bring in the name, address, city, state, and zip, and country. We don't need phone for this, so we're just gonna delete that. We want the email, and we want the grand total. So we don't need subtotal, and we don't need tax. Okay, but let's say we wanted to pull something out of the email that the template doesn't pull in. What we do is we just click add a new parsing rule. Then we just give it a list of rules that it uses to find that particular field within the email. So the first thing we do is tell it where it can go to find this specific piece of information. In this case, it's the body of the email. And then we can click HTML or plain text. The system does HTML, so I'll click that. Okay, so basically the idea is we need to set up rules that enable mail parser to read the text, and then pull out the value that we're looking for. So in this case, if I scan through the original email, I scroll down and I see this is the course that was purchased, and then there's a dash, and then there's this product code, and then there's the quantity and the amount. Let's say I wanted to pull out the product code. Here's how we might set up a rule like this. First, I would look for something that's consistent, like I need to look um, under the line that starts with product, because it always starts with product and then it gives me the product. Or I could say, let's find everything that's above the word subtotal, you get the idea. But in this case, we would set up a series of rules. So first, let's say we eliminate everything above the word product. There's a bunch of rules. So for example, we can find the starting or, or end position. We can remove lines, blank spaces. Uh, we can replace. We can find entities. We can extract tabular data. 
and, and more. So there's an extensive set of tools. So in this case, we want to find everything that comes after the word product. So we click add text filter and find start position. We want to find everything that is after product and then a space and then a vertical bar. Okay, and then we, we apply another filter. We apply as many filters as we need. Okay, and let's find, let, let's get rid of everything after the word subtotal. So I'm going to define the end position as everything after the word sub dash total. Okay, and this is looking better. Okay, now what we notice is there is a dash. So why don't we find everything that's after the dash? So we go here, set start position, and we're going to do a space dash space. Okay, that's looking good. And now let's set the end position as the vertical bar. So define end position as text after space, vertical bar space. Okay, we're getting pretty close. And now I think one more filter ought to do it. Let's go ahead and define the end position. space, vertical bar space, and then I think we got it, okay? And then we can click OK, looks good, and we're just gonna call this the product code and validate and save, okay? And that is an example of how you would go through starting with a template to parse the email, and it parses the email like one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, all these times, each time pulling out a specific unique value. And so some of these were created automatically. It's got really good built-in rules. And for product code, I had to define the series of rules specifically. So it'll take a little while to kind of learn how to use those rules, but that's the basic idea. We just keep applying a series of filters until we get to exactly the data that we want. Now, let's see if it worked. Let's go to emails. We'll open up our email. And so these, these yellow highlighted values are the values that it's going to find. Uh, including this product code here. So what we would do is we would set up our e-commerce system to send a copy of all purchase confirmations directly to the mail parser inbox. Mail parser does its thing, it brings up these values, and then the next step is to send this over to Zapier, which will then send this data over to QuickBooks or any other Zapier connected application. And what we'll do is we'll cover Zapier in the next video. Thanks so much for joining me, have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University.